back to another video. We're here to see what I would class the forgotten Group B cars. And the reason why I say that is the Group B area, we all know the, you know, the short wheelbase Quattros, the RS200s, the T16s, the Metros, we all know them as that's the Group B area. But with me being able to work on this little thing and help restore it, it's been the point of learning curve that they did engine sizes. So, um, you did this started at 1300, 1600, two litre above two litre. So this here was classed as the giant killer. You would not believe that in the full run of Group B, this little thing would come quite often in the top 10. So imagine having a field of, like I've just said, Metros, Aldis, all of them, and this little Talbot Samba, Group B Evolution, keeping up and being in the top 10. So let's have a walk around and let's show you what is the class as the forgotten Group B small engine cars. Samba running the engine in before the race event. So basically, we're on a quiet industrial estate. It's a late Saturday afternoon. No one's really around. And I've been given the opportunity to basically hand the keys and do a couple of laps to have a feel, to see what this little thing's like. So let's get started and let's see what this little car drives like. <laughs> Basically, this car ran in the Spanish Rally Championship. It was the Spanish Peugeot Talbot team car. Originally, it was narrow-bodied, so it didn't it didn't have any of these arches. It didn't have the wide track that this has got at the, at the front. It ran in 1984, did very well in the Spanish Tarmac Championship. And then for 1985 and 86, um, in 1985, they actually evoed the car. So they put these these wider panels, wider track. Is that did this kid keep the engine the same from the original Samba from the Evolution, non-Evolution to the Evolution? Is it the same engine? You know. Uh, that's a very good question. I'm not absolutely certain. Okay. I would suspect that what they what they probably did was they probably ran 12, a 1219 or, or or something like a, something like that. And then and then what they did was when they when they evoed it, they just did absolutely everything they could possibly do to oh, okay. it. What you got to remember is Peugeot Talbot were developing all this rally stuff, not just to run on Sambas, but they were tuned, they were working with 104s, they were working with the Visas. Because I'm, I'm right, because when I read they did the history in this, this was kind of the same time as the 205 as well, they were developing that at the same time? 205 that... came slightly after these right, cars. Right, okay. Um, but the crossover, the crossover on the on the very, 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 very early 205s, was the engine was shared from the Visa and from. Right. Okay. These. So in 1985, uh, Moratal drove this car uh, as he did in '84. So '83, '84, it was narrow bodied, and then '85, eight, '86. The evolution is sheltered like it is the, now. Okay. Like it is now. Yeah. Um, nice thing to point out when you've got the bonnet up is is the suspension. Is painted exactly the same way as a T16. All right, okay. So that's what Peugeot Motorsport. Is that did. why the red and the blue? Handed, yeah. Right, okay, so that, right. So that it's simple for the for the team to, to change quickly. But as I said to you before, this ran up to the 1300 class in Group B, and it was a giant killer. It, it did, it, you know, it, it regularly finished in the top ten. Right. On tarmac rallies, in including against the big boys. Yes. 
Manticore. Right up there. Wow. And, and if you ever watch it, there's a, you, you can you can see why because when everybody else is breaking to to come to a you know a nadgery sort of you know right then left over a bridge and what have you, all the big all the big guys are breaking and then they're you know negotiating and then they're nailing it because they've got the got the power. He's not. Yeah, because he's not. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got no weight as he's in, he's out and out, yeah. He's out and he's gone. He's, so know. are these the same time as the Sunbeam? Um, after. After? Yeah, after. yeah the right. sun, Sunbeam. Think of it running Group 4, you could transfer it into Group B. Okay. And the reason why the, why the, why the, the, the uh, FISA did that was because what they didn't want to do is they didn't want all the manufacturers that had these cars to suddenly go, Group B looks like it's too expensive, we're going to walk away. Right, OK. If you think about it, it made yeah. sense, didn't it? Because yeah. then you'd have the manufacturers thinking, well, we could still run the Escort for a couple of years whilst we're developing our Group B car because nobody knew that Group B was going to end in 1986. Yeah. So at the time of the rally then, so let's say Peugeot and Talbot turned up, and obviously this is the lower class, what would be in the bigger classes then at, at this time? So, Lancia 037? Yeah. No, as for what Peugeot would run. Oh, that Peugeot would run? Um, in eight, oh, eight, uh, 84 um, T16. Right, okay. Ford up, would the 405 be at that era? What was the 405 era? No, that was towards the end. That would be 87, 88, right, okay. that sort of period. I didn't even realise they did classes. I just thought it was Group B was all out, whatever you can do. I didn't no, realise no, they did no, engine no, classes. No, no. I didn't realise no, no, that. No. They did, they did, uh, did 1300, 1600, 2 litre and over 2 litre. Wow. And for this to finish in the top 10 most of the time is very, very impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. Yeah. So I've had the privilege of being able to help get this thing back on the road because it's been off for a long, long time. And this little thing is beautiful. And whilst working on it, I've been learning the full history of what it's all about, what went into it, and all the background stories of this Group B Talbot Samba. So at the time, Peugeot had just bought Talbot and they teamed up and this was one of their Talbot rally cars. And they ran it, I think, as people are going to correct me, pulling like a Group 4 or something like that, as a non-evolution model. So then when Group B came out, they allowed Peugeot Talbot to do a, gr a Group B series. So this is the Group B. What makes this an evolution is the wide arches, the uh, work suspension, all rated brakes, four pots, you name it. We'll dive into the little specs shortly. But this was like the final version of this uh, Group B Samba. So it's a special little thing, and I don't think people even remember or will even know that these even were rallied, especially even me being a Group B fan. I didn't know this. This car was in the uh, a museum in Spain, and the museum was owned by one of the original drivers, and it was purchased, I think, five or seven years ago, maybe a bit longer, and it's never really been ran over in this country. It was always been in storage. So that's why it's been off the road. But now we're recommissioning it so we can go and do some classic rally events like uh, race retro. That's a bit of the history about the car. So let's dive in and let's have a look at what makes this so special. So the minute you open the bonnet, you're greeted with a pair of giant twin 45s. This engine is a 1285cc, which is a mixed of the 104 and I think I always pronounce this wrong I think it's the the Vista uh, engine to make it as close as possible to the 1300 class that was allowed this thing will make around 130 140 horsepower it has a straight cut gearbox and the gearbox is a bit like what I class as a mini setup which is all kind of built on the side and goes underneath the engine, very tilted back engine. I would have guessed that's for, again, all it seems all the old school cars of that era had the tilted engine, where it's very, very flat back. I love how these carbs just sit at the front of the engine, and they're just giant sucking air in. So as some people will spot, colour coded top mounts, which that basically represents the same as the 205s, where it was easier for the pit crews to know which side was which, as you, if you strip down the suspension, they are all coloured in that same way. So you can see red's always this side and blue's always this side. So technically, it was very, very fast to swap out what needed to be done. It's been uprated with a few bits and pieces. Obviously, lines, hoses have been gone through to make sure it's all up to spec and it's going to be reliable. But as some of the panels is, full fibreglass 
bonnet, fiberglass wings. So as you go to the front, it has four pots on the front. They're called Lockheed, which is actually AP. So it has AP four pots on the front, and it has, uh, as far as we're aware, front Samba calipers on the rear. The discs are off what we find is an Escort forest car, and the rears, two pot calipers, but the discs are the front setup off the Samba themselves. Big thick anti-roll bar, all rolls jointed arms. I don't think you can see it on this on this video, but it's all rolls jointed. A swing arm set up, so it's all adjustable for towing and tow out. Same with the front, all tubular bottom arms, full on coilover set up. This is, as I say, a full Group B specification car so you'd expect it would have the best of the best and to think that probably some of this has gone on to the 205 t 16 the development side so very very interesting very very basic inside as you would imagine not even a, a trick computer for the rally because the car only weighs 670 kilograms with a full tank of fuel just all stripped out full aluminium roll cage which is very very common for the group b era which i didn't realize i didn't think they was steel roll cages but they're not they're all aluminium little lightweight reduction on the steering column makes no difference whatsoever but that's what they've done we have the structure which goes across with the harness bars on and as you can see the the roll cage goes back but it is nothing fancy at all and even looking at the seams doesn't look like it's been seam welded to death it doesn't look like there's been a lot a lot of changes in here but like i say i suppose back then it was about making these things go fast and work looking forward to seeing this thing out at a race retro kind of event and seeing how it goes another nice little touch is the fuel gauge on the roll cage because technically the driver doesn't need to see it it's all for the crew to know that there's fuel in there body catches there's, you know there's, there's not a lot to really see on the outside other than the evolution uh, arches something different something i've never seen something i've never watched rally so it's been a really nice experience to be able to work on this and have the privilege of seeing some history come back out i also find fascinating is the gentleman who's bought this car shows me all the paperwork which comes with it so what's really interesting is when you buy technically what a, a, a group b car it comes with all the homologation papers it comes with all the uh, full breakdown of what's been changed to make it an evolution breakdowns uh, parts lists photographs booklets you name it the full history comes with this car because obviously it was in a museum as well so i think peugeot whoever was the owner of the museum kept it all together to keep this car's history as one so i'm going to sign this one off it is the first group b car genuinely that i have ever driven so that's ticked off the bucket list to drive a group b car it might not be the one that i wanted it to be but you have to start somewhere so it's been a privilege to be able to work on this and get it up back up to speed get it back out of some events you should be seeing me and this car out of some events so if you do come and say hi and again thanks for watching guys and i'll see you all on the next video